I think the biggest danger would be the material failure. Carabiners breaking, all the swivels breaking. The uh, adrenaline, for me, it's, it's actually kind of similar in that once you step out or step on stage, that's when sort of everything happens. I always try to describe it as uh, it's like swimming only really fast. Yeah, then it's just you and your body that can go in all directions, three-dimensionally. Yeah, it's just a really exciting feeling to have a minute of just being suspended in, in space. My name is David Omer. I'm uh, from Germany and uh, I'm a straps artist. I didn't really think that I, I would ever have the name Bath Boy and I actually was trying to fight it in the first few years. But the Bath Act was the one that always stood out and in the end a lot of people in my position, a lot of circus performers are trying to make an act that is a memorable act, that is something that stands out. <laughs> My first production with Spiegel World was uh, Vegas Nocturne at the Cosmopolitan in 2014. That was a monumental you know, undertaking, this thing, and it was just a very good group of acts and really charming people, and it was just a um, weirdly magical group of people that made that happen. But then they added the gazillionaire and turned it into the absent that it is now, which is like satire maybe to what a lot of the other shows are going on in, in Vegas. I think I think the bathtub bag is a is a really good act for this venue because people sit so close. The fact that I have a direct contact to the front row and to the next row, spitting and splashing water at people, then ripples out into the tent and to the back rows where you know there's this empathy for people getting wet. And I mean, some people are really properly getting splashed, but I haven't had anything super crazy where people are super who are just actually annoyed by it. It's kind of the, the opposite. People would try to get into the tub and drink the bath water and like all these weird things. I haven't had people really upset about, about it too much. So to stay in shape for oh, seven shows a week is basically preparing for the act. There's a warm-up routine that I have that is focused on flexibility and strength that, but to support what I do on stage and then just doing the job basically keeps me in shape for that. Having done the act for now 20 years I'm still having a really good time I still get my little bit of adrenaline before I go on stage and because of the nature of the bathtub as well there's an element to it that is always playful and there's still things happening that haven't happened before which is amazing to me after I don't know many thousand times of doing it it's kind of amazing I can still do it and I can still see people in the front row genuinely laughing and, and having a good time and then that in return makes me uh, makes me have a good time as well. <laughs> that's pretty good. The circus world does feel like a big family. Everybody that's in this world knows that and you're making a home away from home. There's something about this this closeness on stage and off stage where you sort of sometimes forced to make things work. That is a really special special thing. If you guys can put something together that we like We'll do it, otherwise we have to send him back to China. My name is Ming Fang. Uh, I'm from China. Uh, I'm an acrobat. I'm doing aerial straps. My name is Alexa Fang, and I used to be an acrobat for Spiegel World, and now I am the director of wellness, so I'm the head of the physical therapy department for all the shows at Spiegel World. And when we created the act, it comes from Blood, sweat, tears, <laughs> trying a thousand things. The traditional way when you do an acrobat, like I was like doing the heart trick, then come down, then hey, showing others, look, I did a very dangerous move. But this act we're doing is about story, two people, we're depending on each other. So uh, we're trying to give the audience feel like we're loving each other, we have to trust each other and hold tight never give up. When you talk about catastrophic injuries for artists, it, there's like a block. The door closes where they're like, we don't think about it, we don't talk about it, we don't want to know what's going to happen. It, it doesn't exist. I don't think about serious uh, injuries because that sounds scary. So I always, before the show, every show, 
would tell my partner, I would say, play safe. We started telling each other, play safe, a long time ago. I, tell, I say that to all of the acrobats as I go out, and I really love that as a reminder that this is a job, but you're getting to play, so you should enjoy it and feel the audience. But a safe moment is paying attention and being present in that moment and not letting your mind wander and keep your mind engaged in what you're doing, because that, I think, is the key to safety. I tell everyone all the time, I hope that all of my work at Spiegel World is a massive waste of time. That is my ultimate goal. The cast is really connected right now. I, before, I never had that feeling in, like, in another show because like, we know four months later we're going to be gone. Always I want to be stay one spot. And it was hard for everyone, but Spiegel World has given us that beautiful moment at the end. I'm attempting to set a world record. Let's go, Chico! For the most somersaults around the hoop. Yeah! In one minute by a female. It's important to me to give meaning to my movements, to my character, because my soul is being poured every single night in the best show in the strip. For me, like circus is like an endless art form. You have to like dive in, be present, and just be in that moment. Becoming an artist is more complex than just a profession. It's a lifestyle, it's like who you are and like the way you take the lead of your life. I'm an aerialist at the Spiegel Tent show Absent in Las Vegas. And I had a career as an aerialist for the last uh, 16, 16, 17 years. Like with the straps, like yeah, the spin and everything, but you don't move that much. I was craving to be more of a mover, to like have like a different story to tell with my body as well. So I propose the character that I'm playing now, that is an Amazonian woman. The way I like to develop my act, I start by who am I playing and why am I playing it. First of all, because that's the female empowerment and to honor my grandmother that she's native and all of that for me was really important. From Mexico City, you can see the mountains and the volcano. It's a fairy tale that we, we know. The mountain looks like a sleeping woman and she was a princess, she was an Aztec princess. The way I start my act, I'm laying on top of the hoop and for me, I'm representing the mountain. I am hoping when it comes from a place of like genuine soul existence, then the connection goes beyond just a show on the strip. The challenge has been great. I'm really enjoying it, besides all the bruises and scratches. <laughs>
I just had a moment. You know, I, I cried, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna try to be cool. Like, I was like, it's over. So we have a new cast member with the Atomic Saloon show called Avi. Wow, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely nervous about like being the new guy all the way from Wisconsin, but you know. At the same time, it's not my first rodeo, for lack of a better pun. Well, here we go, here we go. It's cute, I'm here for it. I like the pole. Nice. I'm excited. It's so beautiful. There's a sense of intimidation, but at the same time, I'm excited to bring what I have to the table and kind of find my own little isms within the entire architecture of this show. So today, it's kind of a relief and nerves mixed all together. And I know from experience, it's kind of one of those favorite moments of performing. Today we did some dancing, and we did some staging, and I'm feeling, feeling frisky. It's always difficult when unforeseen circumstances and injury happens, and then you've got to have a big delay, but I have to say, Avi got right back on that horse no pun intended, and honestly made record progress in, in a short amount of time to be where we are today. I'm really not actually that nervous anymore. I feel like actually this whole thing made me just get an over it attitude. Just like, come on, like I've done it all now, so let's go. since the dramatic knee injury. I feel like I'm just kind of ready to like break through the ice and get some under my belt and then it'll start to feel a lot natural and easier as the weeks go on. Oh, he's 100% ready. There's always a point where you could keep nitpicking at the details, but really what you need to do is get in front of an audience and feel the feedback. So today it's, uh, it's kind of a relief and nerves mixed all together. And um, I know from experience, it's kind of one of those favorite moments of performing. I think for the first time, like, nothing weird with the knee. Everything felt good. I was hit all my marks. I had all my costumes on. Yeah, and I feel good. I was the most excited about, like, hitting the end and the confetti all over my face. We are in a live show, so anything can happen. You have to be fully focused at all times. Every show is a brand new potential for something terrible to happen. There's so many risk elements. You have to be 100% focused. For aerial pole, there's nothing for you to grab on except the pole. That makes it a lot more dangerous. You can have a fall, you can break something. Now you shattered uh, the bone that was right in here in the middle. It just takes that one fall that you can have and that's, that's it. That's the end of your career. My name is Fernando Miro. I'm a professional dancer and acrobat in Spiegel World. Atomic Saloon Show is a mess. It's the most fantastic Western story that you could ever imagine. It's so full and rich of talented people and good content. So, I, yeah, Atomic is the best. <laughs>
I played the outlaw in the Atomic Saloon show. Originally, when I auditioned for Atomic, I wanted to be the role of John Louis. I do aerial straps as well. And I was like, oh, I can, I've done that character before in other shows. I can play the innocent guy who kind of like has a dark side. But they saw that I could potentially be a better outlaw which is a more mature, like more uh, experienced performer. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Let's give it a try. So then I tried on the outlaw and I was like, wait, I actually kind of like this way more than Jean-Louis. And now I still get to back up Jean-Louis as well. What's really fun about this character is that it comes in as this very bad kind of like egotistical maniac but flirty and likable still and then he does his own number he does his shock value moment and then he comes later in the show and he's this big old queen and, <laughs> and he, he's just happy to be flamboyant and he just shows everybody how exciting it is to be free and, and loving and, and, and it's just a big old rainbow coming out. I call it the transitioning unicorn. And then there's still that question mark that I like to leave people with. I was like, yeah, but he's not that flamboyant. So is he gay or not? Like, is he just playing the character or not? Like, question mark. And that's where I like to keep the audience members at. You get to perform in front of people, especially in Spiegel World. Uh, most of the audiences are very intimate. You get to defy gravity and uh, there's always that shock value. There's that thing that it's inside of you that you just love entertaining and you just build yourself this world where everything revolves around that and it's a lifestyle. It's, it's like how can I entertain these people more and how can I level up my quality of entertainment and uh, I think that's the beauty of it. If you love circus, check out more Circus Town videos and please subscribe so you'll never miss a trick.